If you're in your first micro econ class and you feel like you're gonna fail your final exam, this right here is what I'd make sure you know about price controls. And if you've been confused about the whole non-binding price control thing, watch until the end, we'll go through an example. In this market right here, without any price controls, it's operating at this equilibrium price and this equilibrium quantity. But let's imagine the government intervened and set a price ceiling right here. What would that do? Well, any price above that point is invalid because this price ceiling right here is the highest price that this market can sell whatever good it's pertaining to at. What this means is that we will be operating at a new quantity demanded and a new quantity supplied. So now more units of this good are demanded by consumers than producers or suppliers are willing to supply to the market. What we need to focus on here is the difference between these two values, resulting in this shortage right here in the market. Hey, real quick, before we move on to floors here, if you need me to walk you through all of microeconomics as fast as possible, because maybe your exam's tomorrow, I can teach you everything you need to know in two hours. Google Crammer Nation, you'll find me, I've got 95 microeconomics concept breakdowns, and each contain like a minute long TikTok that step-by-step step walks you through what you need to know. And you can unlock them all for free with your emails. So make sure to go check that out if you need help now. Okay, let's do the same thing that we just did, except with the price floor. Imagine the government came in and set a price floor right here. What this would do would invalidate any price below this value. They are setting a minimum price in the market that is artificially above what the market would operate at without interference. This results in a new quantity supply value and a new quantity demanded value. Except this time they're flipped. Our quantity supplied is greater than our quantity demanded, meaning that the difference between these two quantity values here is a surplus. Conceptually what's going on here is suppliers or producers are happy that now they can sell their goods at a higher price, but consumers don't want to pay the higher price. So there'd be a surplus of units that producers want to sell, but consumers don't want to buy. As promised, let's wrap this up here with a non-binding price control. We'll start with a non-binding price ceiling and then move to a floor. Imagine the government came in and said, hey, this is our new price ceiling. The market would not care. Because remember, the price ceiling is setting a maximum price. So any prices above this ceiling are invalid, but the market's already operating below the ceiling. This is a non-binding price ceiling because it's not impacting the market equilibrium. Same would go with the floor. Imagine the government came in and said, hey, this is now our new price floor. Any prices below this floor are now invalid. Well, nobody would care because the market is already operating above that floor. Therefore, this non-binding price floor is not gonna impact the market equilibrium. It is very easy to just start solving a problem and not check whether or not the price control is binding. So remember, for a price ceiling to be binding, it's gotta be below the current equilibrium price. And for a price floor to be binding, it's gotta be above the current equilibrium price. Otherwise, they're non-binding and will not impact the market equilibrium quantity.